Welcome to the third episode in a seven-part Legendarium series about the Seven Kings of Rome. In this episode, we will talk about the third king of Rome, Tullus Hostilius. Tullus Hostilius followed Romulus and Numa Pompilius. He ruled Rome from about 673 to 642 BC. If these dates are correct, he would have been the first king of Rome born after the founding of the city. Of course, this is difficult to know for certain because of the lack of records from this time. Tullus's grandfather Hostus distinguished himself during the reign of King Romulus, when the Romans and Sabines ready to do battle. Hostus rushed ahead from the warband, and a Sabine warrior hurried out to fight him in a heroic duel. Though he failed to win the duel, Romulus held up Hostus as a model of courage for other Romans to follow. After this, he and his family became influential members of the tribal council. Again, we should think of the early kings of Rome not as kings, but powerful war chiefs who ruled with tribal councils made up of warriors. And these chiefs lorded over not a huge city, but a collection of hamlets that shared a common shrine and market. Most Romans lived in houses made from wattle and daub, or woven stick frames plastered by a mixture of mud, straw, and animal feces. Tullus Hostilius likely lived in a similar hovel. Curiously, little is known about the early life of Tullus Hostilius. As the story goes, Tullus came to power after the death of Numa Pompilius, the second king. Unlike Numa's peaceful reign, Hostilius showed himself interested in waging war. It seems probable that the warrior class grew weary of Numa's peace policy and elected Hostilius to give them a chance for fame and fortune. Far from being the disciplined legions of later centuries, Hostilius led a war band who armed themselves with spears and daggers made by a local smith. When they met enemy war bands, they often sang war songs, shouted, and pounded spears against shields. Such displays alone could frighten off enemy war bands. During his reign, Tullus Hostilius is said to have waged war against the neighboring villages of Alba Longa and Fidene. Hostilius led his troops into battle personally, showing courage and skill to his followers. One of his most famous victories involved his defeat of the Albans. According to legend, Tullus Hostilius challenged the Alban king Metius Fufetius to a duel to decide the outcome of the war, which of course Tullius won. However, the Italian political map remained fluid and cities could break away from stronger neighbors at the first sign of weakness. Medius tried to do just that with Hostilius, who promptly invaded a second time, and this time he killed Medius to make sure he could cause no more trouble. Nonetheless, in a sign of how the early Romans dealt with defeated enemies, he brought the defeated Albans into the Roman fold, doubling the chieftaincy's population. This also meant he doubled the number of men he could call upon for the summer campaign season. Tullus also added Albans to the tribal assembly, later called the Senate, and built a building called the Curia Hostilia for them. In all probability, this building would not have been a grand marble monument, but a simple wooden hut where warriors gathered to discuss, unsurprisingly, matters of war. In this way, Hostilius embodied the Roman virtues of pietas and dignitas, or faith and courage. A pious man kept Rome safe from the gods' anger, while a brave man kept Rome safe from en enemies in the here and now. Despite his success as a war chief, Tullus supposedly grew arrogant. He then paid little attention to the religious rites that appeased the famously temperamental Roman gods. Soon enough, evil omens began to appear that showed the gods' anger, including a shower of stones falling from the sky and the eruption of a nearby volcano. Finally, a great voice sounded from the top of a nearby mountain, warning the king that he tempted the gods. Romans firmly believed in such omens and often wrote them into their histories to explain disasters. When a plague struck the village during Hostilius's reign, Romans believed it to be divine punishment for their impiety, especially that of their king. 
Feldus grew anxious for answers and flipped through the writings of his pious predecessor, Numa Pompilius. Finally, Hestilius found a ceremony that would call for the protection of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. According to lore, the king gathered everything he needed for the rite and chose to perform the ceremony alone inside his house. Hestilius did not take Numa's notes with him and instead trusted his memory. This turned out to be a terrible mistake. The king's mind faltered and he made an error in the ceremony which the Romans saw as an unforgivable sin. Instead of earning Jupiter's pity, it only angered the king of heaven. When Tullus Hostilius completed his wrong ceremony, a white hot bolt of zigzagging lightning smote the royal house. Tullus Hostilius could not escape in time and paid the ultimate price for his sacrilege. The chief's death served as a reminder of the fragility of human power and life and the need for humility in the face of the gods. Despite his inglorious death, later generations of Romans admired Tullus Hostilius for his martial vigor. The great poet Virgil wrote of the third king, he shall find Rome anew, from mean estate, in lowly curus, led to mightier sway. But after him arises one whose reign shall wake the land from slumber. Tullius then shall stir slack chiefs to battle, rallying his hosts which had forgot what triumphs be. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.